Well, hello. Uh, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but I think I have fixed the sound issue from last time. And those are very boring details, so I'm just going to jump right in. I wanted to do an origin story for Guerrero because I thought it's sort of interesting to hear my perspective on where I, when I first started thinking about this sort of stuff. And that was about 10 years ago. I went to a Catholic school and we had to take theology classes. So junior year, 10 years ago, uh, I was taking a theology class and we did a chapter on homosexuality. And the teacher that we had was, was sort of very pro-gay. In fact, he was probably gay himself. Now, because this was a Catholic school, he couldn't really, he couldn't really say what he really meant. So he couldn't say, well, all this Catholic stuff on homosexuality is a bunch of bullshit. So he had to kind of sneak things in in a very clever sort of way. So even though most of the material that he presented to us was very pro-gay, he did the science stuff, how gays are born that way. Um, and how he, he also like tried to show us that lots of big companies offer uh, medical benefit or same-sex partner benefits even 10 years ago. And how... A lot of companies, a lot of companies that we knew about, like Budweiser and and all this stuff, that they advertised to the gay community. So it was his way of saying, "Hey, uh, all these, all these big companies aren't afraid of gay, so neither should you be." But he he, he did have to cover his ass, so he did have to quote from uh, the Catholic Catechism, which is the uh, uh, question and answer book for uh, for Catholics. And it's interesting, that was the only part of the catechism that we really had to read that year, was the section on homosexuality, which says that uh, same-sex acts are some, some, something along the lines of objectively disordered, or something like that. It's something very, very negative. But, but he made us memorize it so, you know, he could say if anybody was supervising him, like, oh, well, I, I made them uh, memorize uh, the Catholic catechism stuff. But I do remember one thing he told us, and, and he told us basically to, to put our pens down, and he just wanted to tell us something that was very important. And he told us about the homophobia study. And if you're interested in the homophobia study and the link to it, uh, I think you can check out the forum or below the video or Chapter 4 of Grero. But the, the basic conclusion of the homophobia study was that 80% of homophobes get erections when watching gay porn, basically. So his, his point and his message was, if you're being a, a homophobic bully and you're saying, you know, fag this and fag that, then we know exactly what you're thinking about, you see. So he wanted to make it into this sort of anti-bullying uh, sort of thing. And, you know, I don't know if it was his influence or, I mean, I, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Houston, so I, this wasn't some backwater town. Uh, uh, this is in the South, and it's in Texas, but even though the school was Catholic, there there really wasn't too much homophobia that was outright homophobia. A lot of it was, it was just kind of this unease. There there wasn't any homophobia, There nobody was really called a fag or anything, but there weren't, nobody was really all that comfortable to be out, okay? There weren't very many people who were out. There was maybe, I think there was like maybe one or two guys, or that's it, uh, in, a, in a school of maybe... 800, 800 guys, all guys school as well. So, so you know, even if we look at the the gay numbers and not the Guerrero numbers, because those are those are very interesting. If we just look at the gay numbers, I mean, you would have to have a lot more people than than two out of 800. You'd have to have at least what? Oh boy, here's a math question. Yeah, about 16 for two percent, uh, 24 for three percent. So you would have to have an entire class of people who would be gay in a school of that size. But you didn't. But my point, so the homophobia study says 80% of, of people are homophobes. Uh, they get 80% uh, of homophobes get erections to gay porn. And this was his way of saying, you know, don't be a bully who's homophobic because we know, we know what's going on with you. And, and, and I remember when I heard that, I was struck as this is really odd. Because if you talk to regular people and you listen to people, they are very homophobic, even subtly homophobic, but they, they are homophobic nonetheless. And the way I think most people would visualize this study is 
if let's say 2% of the population is gay, or maybe 3%, but well, let's just say 2. It doesn't really matter, but it's a small minority. Let's say 2% just for, our, for the sake of numbers right now. And then they imagine that, well, 1% of the population is homophobic, and then, oh, well, the, if we lived in a non-homophobic society, those homophobes would join with the gays, and you'd have 3% of the population that's gay, right? But the problem is, because of my experience, and I think the experience of, of really anybody else, you realize that most people are kind of homophobic. So if you extrapolate the numbers and you say 80% of homophobic people would get erections to gay porn or of, of males, well, if most people are homophobic, or let's just say for the sake of simplicity, half of all people are homophobic, if 80% of half of all males get erections to gay porn, that's 40% of all males. That doesn't make any sense. You know, that does not make any sense that 40% of males would be getting... Because if the whole point with homophobia is that it's, it's, um, that it's just these latent attractions bubbling to the surface in this negative lashing out, then you certainly would not expect 40% of the population to get erections to gay porn, if we extrapolate from this study. Because science says that you, you only have a small minority of people who are exclusively homosexual, so to speak. I don't like those labels, read the book. Uh, but even if you look at bisexual, bisexuality, anywhere from, from exclusive homosexuality to, to very little homosexuality, even those numbers would not be very much higher than 5 or even 10%. So the point is, if you get to 40%, uh, again, 80% times half equals 40%, that still is, where, why are all these people attracted to other men? And that's what struck me odd. So I went home, I looked up the study, and I looked up, how do they define homophobia, you know? Because, again, most people would think of homophobia as, I like to hunt down gays and, you know, bash them with baseball bats. But homophobia was defined very uh, loosely, just you're uncomfortable around gay people. You know, the questions in the questionnaire that they use was, you know, like, are you uncomfortable if there's gay people in the room? And how many people would say, how many people do feel uncomfortable if there's gays in the room or they're holding hands or something like that? So again, the point is, if you have a large number of people who are homophobic, and the homophobia threshold is very low, and we see in a study that so many men who, who, who meet that low threshold for homophobia get erections, then you can extrapolate that into the general population and say, my God, you know, half, these, half of all men would be getting erections to gay porn. And, and, and that struck me as odd even then, because science says only a small minority of people are attracted to, are attracted to, mem uh, to same sex uh, uh, members. Uh, so if you're a male, you're attracted to male, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's not exclusive attraction, there's very few people who are attracted. So that struck me as very odd. And I said, wait a second. So science says two, three, four, five, even 10%. Uh, you can check the book for where all these numbers are coming from. But even if we say 10%, that's not 40%. You know, and when you look at the when you look at the homophobia study in detail, you realize that even the non-homophobic men, one third of them got erections to gay porn. So if you just say 50-50, homophobic, non-homophobic, basically 60% of men would get erections to gay porn. I, I, and that's insane because again, if the whole point with homophobia is he, here's some latent attractions bubbling to the surface then that would, that would uh, be at odds with the idea that only a small, small minority of males are attracted to other men. And I just want to wrap it up before I ramble even more. But th that's when I realized, my God, there's so much more to, se to sexual orientation than, than just this, ooh, there's a small minority of gays and that's it. Because th this study itself showed that Lots of men can be attracted to other men. And it took, you know, and, and the lessons are, you know, it took 10 years for me to, to well, it took about two, three years to write this, uh, to put it all together. There was, I, I wanted to be very thorough, look at all the research. Uh, but it's taken 10 years to go from I have this idea to let me write it down and put it out there on the Internet. Uh, so...
what is my point? I'm not really sure if there's a point to that. Well, uh, yeah, there, there's really not a point to that. It's just, I, I guess I feel kind of nice that I've been able to put it out there, I suppose. And, and uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, come to the forum. Uh, if you have any questions specifically about the book or you have personal s stories to share, um, you know, let me know. And uh, that's it. Thank you for listening.